Uh, most of you know that we just launched the Dynata Insights platform, a groundbreaking solution that brings together in one place all of the tools you need to get the most from your data and insights, ensuring you can activate them along every step of your campaigns for maximum impact. Here to provide an in-depth overview is our own product development guru, and in a little while, she'll be joined by two of our clients who were beta testers for the platform. She brings extensive experience in data-driven product development, a veteran of the digital insight space. Her expertise includes data and insights platforms, digital advertising, measurement, mobile apps, ad tech, and strategic product planning. Uh, please join me in welcoming Tiyama to the stage, and later she'll be joined by two of our clients who were beta testers for the platform. interesting music choice I got there. Um, so hi everybody, I am really excited to be speaking to all of you today about the Dynata Insights platform. Um, the platform is something that we've been working on for about eight months now. Um, so last year, as many of you know, we were lucky enough to bring in uh, the Reimagine Holdings Company, um, which owned a variety of different tried and true products that were out in the market, um, products like Critical Mix for scripting, uh, market site for reporting and analytics. Dynata, or legacy Dynata, owned um, other tried and true products like Samplify, which is about DIY access to audiences. And so when I came on and joined the team, um, we looked at, you know, what is the product strategy that we have uh, to deliver against the corporate vision? And we found that actually we had pretty much everything we needed under our house um, to create a seamless platform that could allow our clients to solve the biggest pain points that they were suffering from today. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to give you a preview of what that was, which is taking those different components and building them into one holistic platform that is really meant just to be a tool for all of us in the room to um, spend less time doing the things that uh, can be automated or can be efficiently executed um, in a more repeatable, scalable way and have more time to do the things that, um, quite frankly, are demanded for us to continue to be, you know, relevant and help our, our clients move forward. Um, so, I'm going to give you a brief preview of the platform um, and what a customer experience looks like. Um, and before I do that, I think the three things to keep in mind about kind of our principles, right? Um, so when we, we build something, we kind of look at what is our true north, right? And it was based on going around and spending lots of time speaking to some of you in this room, um, many of your teams, about what were those pain points that you were suffering from. Um, one of the biggest ones was operational efficiencies and cost savings. It is just extremely taxing to conduct a research project um, in ways that it doesn't need to be a lot of times anymore. Um, there was folks that we were talking to that were having to hand off between four or five different teams or different platforms or different silos um, before they could go from, you know, initial question to actually having the data in hand and being able to work with a client on inspiring them, as Vanilla said yesterday. Um, so the first thing that we're trying to do is drive efficiencies, right? Let's, uh, let's think about David Souls today and his point that the customer doesn't care about your operational um, or organizational structures. Right? We have to break down those silos. We need to ensure that you guys can go out and if you have a question, you can collect quality data that will drive you to have insight that you can use with your context and your experience to consult with a client on what they should do with that. So let's get rid of those product silos. That was one of the things. Um, we wanted to remove the need to manage multiple vendors where you didn't want to. Right? I think you know, Hillary's point about LRW and their approach to you know, sourcing from multiple different panels is really smart, right? Um, you do need to make sure that you, at one, don't have all of your eggs in one basket, um, but, you know, two, you want to make sure that you're diversifying that bias and, and really having as representative of a population as possible. Um, but when you want to be able to work with one vendor, we wanted to make it possible for you, right? So, um, you know, as we'll be talking about in the platform, we built it in so that whether you want to access our unique first party panels or whether you want to use those to match to your CRM databases and have access to your customers, which by the way, headline yesterday, my biggest, most favorite part of the conversation is your customers are our panelists, so we should treat them like that, right, all the time. Um, and we can do that because of the PII that we have on our panels. So I can say, great, you know, Lawrence is, uh, you know, a, a member of my panel. He also buys your product, and I have all the CRM database that's available, data available. We can make that available in our platform, right? 
Um, and then if you want to use your tried and true partners that you've been using for years and love, those are also available within the platform. So those are examples of removing those inefficiencies and inconsistencies um, while improving your ability to really collaborate um, and get better end-to-end -end visibility on projects. So that's, that's one thing, the pillar was efficiency. Uh, another area that we wanted to focus on was then reducing the time to market. Um, I came to Dynata most recently from Zappi, and it was interesting spending you know, about a year speaking to a lot of corporate clients where I hadn't spent as much time with them in the past. And one of the things that they told us consistently is, look, we're not getting, you know, if I'm Pepsi, I'm not being taken out by the next Coke. I'm being taken out by this small little upstart that's coming in, you know, northeast Tennessee and is eating away at my rev, you know, at my market share in this very important up and coming Gen Z group. Um, our clients need the ability to be able to respond in real time to requests for insights. Um, and so, you know, that was another thing that I thought of today in, in David Solis's presentation, which was there's this whole concept of the on-demand experience consumer that requires on-demand insights. And by allowing us to put tools into your hands where you can create those insights when you need to in the way that is most effective for you to do that, um, you get your insights to market faster. And you know, uh, we're able to do that because we've got access to the largest audience you know, um, of first party panel on the world and uh, they allow us to connect to the types of information that make them actionable for you, right? So I'm, I'm really excited to have two of our clients up here talking with me later and one of the things that I love that they've done is you know, they haven't just leveraged this tool to go out and talk to primary grocery shoppers um, or to moms of you know, babies, but they actually created their own typologies and their own audiences to have on demand ready to go, right? And that's their unique IP that they bring to their clients and it's now available on the fly. Um, so reducing that time to market, letting you make sure that your impact and your um, inspiration with your stakeholders is making an impact in, in enough time that's needed, right? And then the last pillar of our platform is really about combining those things into a competitive advantage. And this is where I just have to say thank you to everyone here who's come and is willing to talk about the work that you're doing. These discussion panels have been amazing. Um, the fact that we get to talk about case studies where we try things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, our industry hasn't really adopted sharing as broadly as I wish it would, right? Um, <laughs> over the years, uh, you know, trying to convince clients, I mean, I've, trying to be, I've been trying to do new product development for over 10 years, and the number one thing that my poor salespeople need to sell new products is they need proof that these things work. But if we don't talk about how we test, and we don't talk about what we learn, and we don't share that in a way that, of course, you know, I'm not asking you to share things that are your own IP, but share them in ways that help benefit and lift all of us, right? Um, because when you combine these new tools, you will have a competitive advantage um, and we really see this platform as just being part of what that is. So maybe that is, you know, about you answering questions in an always-on insight world, right, and using that platform to maintain your competitive edge. But maybe it's building new products, right? Maybe it's building new services. Um, regardless, you know, it's about giving you full visibility into the process and the creation of insights and allowing you to use that in whatever way is going to help you drive the most incremental growth for your business. Okay, so let's go into the baby, my baby, the platform. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what the customer journey would look like um, and the experience. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show this to you in the framework of a corporate uh, client, just because we thought to still abstract out to the highest level. Um, it'll be relevant all of to you as either yourself or it'll be relevant to you as your customers or your customers' customers. Each of you may use the Dynata Insights platform differently, and it really, one of the things that I'm most proud about it is you know, what I often call the plug and play nature of it. It's not there to force you to use it in any way, except for the way that's going to drive the best outcome for you. So plug and play to the aspects that you want. You wanna use just one piece, go for it. You wanna use all of it, go for it. Um, we built it through microservices API, you know, so that it's connectable, pluggable, you can use it when you want, how you want. Um, and it's really just meant to kind of make your process more frictionless um, and more quick. So here we have an example of a corporate client. We've got our CMO, we've got our brand manager, we've got our research director, our scripter, our fielding analyst, and our data analyst. Today and over the last you know, 48 hours, I think we've heard about 
in multiple different ways, how difficult it is when those people don't have insights and visibility into the whole process, and how much better we are when we share visibility into that process, what our goals are, what our objectives are, what our learnings are, right? Um, so, you know, how this team comes together and collaborates in one way, um, using the Dynate Insights platform, is within that platform. It becomes this kind of space for everybody to have access and visibility to what you're doing. So, um, you're seeing a, a view of the platform um, with the core components that exist today. Um, you know, when we went down this path, one of the things that I knew from, you know, my time at Zappi is that there was a lot of really brilliant tools out there that were made for a standard copy test, a standard pricing test, a standard research, um, you know, project. They're great tools and, um, and that's why they've, you know, the automation space has grown as fast as it is, right? But what there wasn't really out there was a way for you all to brand and kind of productize your own unique ways of doing this at scale, right? So I like to call it internally automation as a service. I hope we get to that place where you come to me and you tell me how you want to do your pricing research. You come to me and you tell me who your audience is. And maybe it's a combination of CRM data and our data. Maybe it's using safe graph location data and um, our data and you know, a few partners' data, right? It doesn't really matter, but like we want you to tell us what is your IP and we'll help you automate it because we can give you access to this consistent way of accessing those audiences at scale, writing survey questions. Now you can use our platform, right? You can use CMIX, but if you love, you know, um, any other platform, I'm blanking on one right now, of course, but you know, if you love another scripting platform, use that, that's great. Um, use the tools that you want, but the idea here is how do you look at the things that you're doing that work for you? How do you build in more consistency to the way that you work and really kind of stamp your IP on your way of collecting insights because it gives you broader comparability, right, which is great for your clients. Um, it gives you greater operational efficiencies, and it gives you a way to go out and brand yourself and talk about your competitive differentiation. So you have all the tools that you need right here to do that. You've got scripting and programming with CMIX. Um, CMIX is a great platform for being able to do fairly, um, you know, simple work to complex work. It is not a survey monkey, right? So it's not like you're going out there and pulling you know, um, from that, but it is for a insights professional, it is a great tool because of its flexibility and because of the way that it allows you to collaborate together, right? Um, and we'll talk more about that later today. We've got sampling, which is all about access to our first party data or your chosen partners or matching to your customer database through our first party, right? Um, increasingly more and more, that's what I'm seeing clients want to do. It's not enough to just talk to the prospects. They want to match their um, audiences to our panel and they want them to be there available for sampling against those CRM audiences in the same survey in real time against prospects, right? We can do that. And then reporting and analytics with MarketSite. Um, one of the first products I ever worked on when I was at Kantar was required a you know, a dashboarding solution. And so I had to go out and do a lot of research on what was the best tool for survey data. And, um, you know, MarketSite was by far, in a way, the greatest tool out there for it because it's built for this type of data, right? Tableau is amazing for visualization, but if you want to interrogate your data, if you want to go in and you want to share stories with different stakeholders, if you want to do that in a repeatable way where you know that if you're within, you know, if you're the CMO and you want to share a certain level of consistent cuts with brand managers that are very different than who you want to be sharing with the research directors, that's what this tool is great for, right? Um, so it really is built for you um, as opposed to just being a standard BI and visualization tool. And then um, the, new, the new kid on the block at the bottom, Instant Insights, and that's really just access to our panel. And when you, if you license this um, platform, you get free research you know, in small chunks every day, just because we don't want you to have to not ask questions that are important. So if you need to do a quick diagnostic, if you need to do something quick like that, um, what we've done is we've given you this cool little feature to just ask a question, get instant insights that day, and not even have to worry about it. I'd rather inform your research with quick diagnostics um, so that you run better research for our panelists, which ultimately is at the real part of my, my heart, what I really want. I want those consumers to have good experiences, be able to monetize their time, their opinion, their data, and this is just tools to do that. Um, okay, so this is where everyone can check in. They have equal visibility. Then, um, let's say that they are going to go in and they want to run a project, right? So our unified project listing view gives the whole team a view into ongoing projects in field. Um, and as we go into launching a new project, in this case, we're gonna launch a new shoe study, 
Um, the key owners in their areas need to be able to have access to that. They don't want to be wasting time with surveys, phone calls, different logins, different tools. Um, and so we're going to start with the survey programmer who's starting this project. They know the questions. Let's say that our uh, client has done the hard work with their client to understand what is that one burning question you want to ask. Um, what is the most important set of questions? Because I don't want to go out and ask everything just for the sake of it. And so we've got a nice 10 minute or less survey that's mobile optimized. And we're going to start with that. Um, and the research director needs to have full view and access into that as well. So they go on in, create a new, or create a new survey. And they're going to go down and name this campaign. 2020 new product testing. OK, let's name this the preliminary market testing for the new shoe product. Go ahead, go in and start your survey. Which brands are you familiar with? Simple, pretty intuitive, which is part of the, the process and part of our intention here, right? Perfect, they've got their survey, they've got it set up, and it's ready for uh, further for the next stage. So now they're gonna go in and they're gonna pick their audience. Well. Let's see, it's the fielding analyst and it's the research director who's involved. They're gonna go on in here, look at the study, and then say, who are we talking to? What do we wanna talk about? Select their categories, select their audiences, um, select their market, and their, all the key kind of inputs that drive cost. Great, cheapest study I've seen, $73. <laughs> Perfect, they've got their audience. And again, the thing to remind you on there, I mean, we're looking there at a very simplistic one, but I think what's great about this platform is it's access to the complexity and the uniqueness of your audience, right? This isn't just about reaching kind of standard audiences, it's about reaching the people that you need to speak to, right, and making them accessible um, in a repeatable way. So um, next, we're gonna go in and we're going to start fielding and looking at the data. So that's the data analyst and the research director. Now we're going into market site um, and we are looking at you know, the data and having it visualized. One of the things that you know, I love about market site demoing it with our clients is I can say yes to almost every question that they ask because it really is designed for the insights professional. Um, so it's, it's a fun one for those of us who have done demonstrations because you can generally please a client with it. Um, and then you've got your reporting done um, and you've got your key findings. And so maybe this has gone up to the CMO and the brand manager, right? Um, the key findings aspect of the platform is something I really love uh, because it's about, again, democratizing those insights, right? Um, it's not just keeping it in the platform and that's not what we wanna do. That's why we built it to be uh, API accessible and plug and play because we want these insights to drive impact for you. And so one of the things that's great about the key findings report is it's a sharing platform. So you can go out, you can publish this information, you can share it and you can do that with consistent settings. Um, and so in this case, the CMO and the brand manager have decided why keep this to ourselves? Let's share this with the advertising agency so that they can go and do some uh, potentially some targeted advertising and development off of it. Let's share it with the retail channels so that they make sure that they understand the common problems that this shoe brand may or may not be facing. And oh yeah, let's also send this to the product development team because man, that was interesting learning that you know reused yoga mats is like super exciting and we should have those in all of our shoes, right? Um, so you know, sharing this information is really in the hands of the team that's accessing this tool. Um, and it's great, it's kind of like a relay where everybody is handing off the baton to the other. Um, once that survey is scripted and run and the data is interrogated and analyzed and massaged, they have a story that they wanna tell, they're ready to get up and inspire and um, inspire to action. And so what makes this all much more efficient is that everybody has visibility into this, right? And I think it's one of those things that's subtle um, and maybe sometimes we even, take for granted how important that is, but I can tell you, and that's one of the things that Lawrence and Johannes and I are gonna talk about is, it's so much more effective when you have access to all this in one place. So, um, what's coming this year? Uh, it was nice to do this presentation right after the discussion on connected data. Um, this is a topic that is so close to my heart. I am so happy to see how far our industry has advanced in this area, um, because where we used to, you know, 10 years ago have to be explaining like, the fact that media buying used to be a proxy for the media itself and 
oh, look, these two teams never speak, and we can do a much better job of driving activation that's based on insights, not just, you know, that they read Golf Magazine. Um, now, you know, it's becoming a standard, and, you know, as Caroline said yesterday, like their clients and our clients too are very rarely coming to us and saying, I just want to do a standard ad hoc survey. They want to do connected data surveys, right? They want to know that Tiama not only, you know, answered in this way, but Tiama also has this purchase profile and Tiama has this social profile and, right, it just, it enriches your data set to work with. So this year what's coming is we're not only going to have access to create those insights and research, but we're bringing the connected data solutions into the platform as well. We've already started doing that. Um, in the platform today, you can go in and you can match against your CRM audiences and we can make them available for sample, which is great. Sample plus voter is another product of ours, especially for the US and the election cycle. We wanted to get that out there and get that ready. Um, but we're gonna be bringing more. So the ability to ingest data and the ability to activate that data will be coming to the platform later this year. Um, that's super important because as we just heard, you know, having that richest, most, um, accurate data set for those seeds is so important to getting those overperforming campaigns and those lifts. After that, what we're also going to be bringing is our ad effectiveness solutions, right? Why just do informed research on the front end? Why not also say, great, Tiama, we know we, we actually exposed this ad to her, but it was for a premium car and, you know, people don't buy cars online. So we want to understand, did she actually achieve brand lift? Well, we're going to do that through our advertising effectiveness solutions that um, we've got available today, and again, it's just about bringing them into the platform. Okay, so that is what's coming this year.